Up now is Mimikyu plus Mr. Mime. Aside from the name sounding pretty goofy, Mimimime. I already love how this looks. This is courtesy of my beautiful girlfriend messing around with the fusion feature. I just have this vision of a sort of possessed ragdoll type thing, especially with how puppet-like Mr. Mime already looks. I wanted to do something very puppet-like. I already have it in my head that this is going to be a sort of puppet construct possessed by a fey being rather than a ghost. Hence, it will be fairy type. I iron out the features that I want it to have a little bit more. On the side, I also sketch out a bunny head to show what this design could look like if the doll is a different animal. And this is also where I conceive it being a normal fairy type. Here the design splits into two as a pre-evolution and a second stage. The idea here is that the pre-evolution is more doll and puppet-like because it's a toy being controlled by a fey being, and then the evolved form is more fey or sprite-like because it is a fey being that has fully integrated itself with the toy, making it a part of its body. Starting with the pre-evolution, we are rolling with much cuter, more chibi proportions. I like the neck tilt to the side because it gives it that feeling of a rag doll that can't quite support its own weight, while also looking curious and playful. Going for a very corpse-like pose that sort of looks almost stiff and floppy at the same time. I also added a little bit of stuffing escaping from the shoulder stitch where the neck slumps over putting extra tension on that seam. Instead of the arms protruding from the shoulders with the little controllers, I reduced it to just one large controller protruding out of the back of the puppet that's sort of like almost broken in half. I also added stripes in this sort of tan and maroonish color or Honestly, more burgundy or wine than maroon, but I thought that this pattern looked like knitted stitches, and it just has a very sock monkey vibe that I think is appropriate. <coughs> now, Farionette, the toy Pokemon. It evolves into Sprite here at level 27. Farionette disguises and protects itself using a stuffed toy. As such, this Pokemon can take a wide variety of looks. It has never been seen snatching a stuffy, so it is not known where it gets them or how it picks one to its liking. It will tug with string-like tendrils to make its stuffed toy do silly little dances. As such, Farionette is well-loved by children and often employed in theater shows. Trainers who perform with Farionette keep the stuffed toy clean, tidy, and in good repair, often mending small rips, but are careful to never stitch near the large tear in its stomach. This hole appears to be where Farionette takes in nutrients and water. Wild or neglected Farionette are immediately identifiable by the stained and ragged appearance of their plushies. Farionette is a fairy normal type Pokemon. Fairy because it is a fey type being that you might expect to encounter in a fairy tale, and normal because a children's plush is just a very normal object. It has the abilities Unnerve, or Infiltrator, or Prankster as a hidden ability. It is small and light, given its toy nature. For the shiny, I switched to a Cheshire Cat-inspired pinkish-purple color scheme. On to Farionette's evolved form. For this version of the design, I have gone with a much lankier, more stretched out anatomy and physique, along with much sharper, more triangular shape language. Once again, I have altered the shape and configuration of the puppet controllers. Instead of it holding them, they now are its arms. Instead of sticking out of its body like in the preview, the controllers are now integrated into the body of the plushie because the plushie has been integrated as a part of this face sprites anatomy now my girlfriend really didn't like how i originally had the face so i changed it up to make it look more like its pre-evolved form which lets it keep its creepy charm 
but brings back some of the cuteness that makes it appealing. The initial color scheme I tried looked very Cheshire Cat, which I didn't want for the main sprite, but packed away for the shiny. For the main sprite, I did something closer to the Sock Monkey-inspired scheme from the pre-evolution, but I made it more vibrant because it's no longer a dingy plush toy. It also has wings and antenna now to emphasize that it is much more Faye Sprite-like, rather than being a simple toy. Here we have Sprite here, the puppeteer Pokemon. It evolves from Farionette at level 27. The plush toy Sprite here controlled as a Farionette has been integrated as a part of its body. As such, it no longer requires routine repairs and remains clean and vibrant. Sprite here is quick and agile as it zips through the air on its newfound wings, but its toy-like body remains floppy and clumsy. No longer needed to control its soft body, the long, stringy tendrils that dangle from its arms are now used to grasp objects and control enemies. Foes wrapped in Sprite here's writhing tendrils find themselves unable to move. It mostly uses this ability to defend against predators as it feeds primarily on plant material. It remains a fairy normal type with the same abilities as its pre-evolution. It is slightly taller and heavier. Stat-wise, I wanted to keep it fairly low because Prankster is such an overbearing ability already. For the shiny, I brought back that Cheshire Cat color scheme that I had put on the back burner with yellow and green accents to complement the purple. It has a very Halloween vibe, which is appropriate considering the theme of this video. Let's do Pumpkaboo plus Ariados. Oh. Oh my. Oh dear, I... I don't like this much at all. Beard spider. It's a beard spider. Spiders shouldn't have beards. Well, uh, let's switch them around and see if that improves our results at all oh my what the heck is what uh what even happened here this just looks like a mangling of random body parts well i'm probably just going to be discarding all of that anyways because i just want to do a super cool halloween jack-o-lantern pumpkin spider into sketches I had this concept, but the jack-o'-lantern face on the spider's abdomen, like the beta version of Ariados's sprite, and then I just had these kind of beady, different sized eyes all over the head, kind of like Bugaboo from Scary Godmother. Not for any particular reason, I just think that it looks cool and charming. And then I tried switching it around, putting the jacko face on the head and the eyes on the abdomen, and then I had the idea of, oh, what if I have the spider stand up on its hindmost legs and sort of walk upright? Which, spoiler alert, that's the direction I end up taking it in. I thought I could simplify the design further if I, instead of a spider, I made it based on a Harvest Man. You probably know Harvest Men as Daddy Long Legs. There is a different species also called Daddy Long Legs that are spiders, but Harvest men are not spiders. They are a different type of arachnid. Instead of two, they have only one body segment, only two eyes, and they do not produce venom or silk. I thought this simplified body shape worked better with standing upright. I also had the idea of, oh, what if the fire inside is like venting out of the jack-o'-lantern face? And I thought that was really cool. I reduced it to only two eyes because that's species accurate, but I kept the sort of beady different sized eyes just because I think it looks charming in a Halloween sort of way. So I went with the idea of the arachnid standing upright on its rearmost legs and kind of using its other legs as arms. I sort of tilted the body to the side, made it the whole pose a little lopsided because I thought that was more expressive and fit with the sort of lopsided theme the design already has going. I wasn't sure what the feet and hands would end up looking like. I had these claw shapes, but when looking at pictures of Harvest Men, I saw some of them had these long, wispy, almost curling appendages. So I went with that and made each limb twist a little at the end. 
I think that also adds to the very almost nightmare before Christmas spooky whimsical feeling. Overall, this design just is a funny little guy, and that's all there really is to it. I love how the feet just look like very long stretched out winkle pickers. The long legs also look like curly Halloween pumpkin vines. This just feels very classic to me. At last, my funny little guy is complete. Here is Harvojack, the harvest Pokemon. Harvojack grows small patches of berries and vegetables as a food source. Small groups of them tend to crops together. It uses the face-shaped vents on its abdomen to deter thieves. It stands tall on its long, spindly limbs to make itself look taller and more threatening. If intimidation fails, Harvojack can produce fire from the vents as a means of attack. The fire is also used to clear areas for farming and burn away dead crops. It stands and walks only on its rearmost pair of legs, using its other limbs for grasping rudimentary tools and plant material. Since we already have the theme of fall harvest going on, I thought that making Harvo Jack a little farmer was very appropriate, and not as far-fetched as one might think, given there actually is a species of partially herbivorous spider. It is a bug fire type, fire from the candle within a jack-o'-lantern and whatnot, with the ability harvest, or intimidate as a hidden ability. It stands at 4 foot 7 inches tall and weighs 68 pounds. Stat-wise, I kept to it being a fairly standard, weak bug type as compensation for the fact that it would probably be a sticky webs user. For the shiny, I sort of reversed things. In the base colors, for the base colors, the body has a light purple tint with green limbs, so the shiny has a light green tint to the body with purple limbs. 